Hello, and uh, welcome to this, I believe, ninth lesson now on inspector calls. If you are doing my whole series of lessons on inspector calls, you can do these out of order. So it, the chronological order isn't all that important. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is, I think, one of the most important characters in the story, of course, is Eva Smith, because she is symbolic of so much. So she is arguably one of the most important characters in the play, but yet the audience don't meet her directly. They don't meet her in the present time. Eva is, Eva's story is told through a series of flashbacks, how each character, the Burlings and Gerald have met her, have interacted with her. And that is how her story evolves is through the experience of the Burlings and Gerald. Okay, so what we're going to talk about specifically is who Eva is, or what Eva is like, what happens to Eva, and what does her outcome imply. All right, so let's go ahead and begin, and we'll talk about Eva Smith. Right, so who is Eva? Well, we know Eva by two names, first of all. Eva is also known as Daisy Renton, and we will get into the uh, symbolic nature of those names towards the end of the session. So we know that she has two names, Eva Smith and Daisy Renton, but we know Eva works for Mr. Burling in his factory. Now she is let go of her position because she demands higher wages for all the workers, not just the women, but all the workers. He does not like this and just lets her go. Now, of course, when we had the uh, lesson about Eric, we, you know, they have the argument about was that fair? Was that ethical? Um, no, it wasn't. But that then starts her downward spiral. She loses that job. Okay, so we know though that she is a very good worker, and Mr. Burling even admits this when he's being interrogated by Inspector Gould. Um, and he's also criticized by his son for firing her. He admits she's a very good worker. Uh, her work was very good quality and she was even in line for a promotion. So why did he have to let her go? Um, it was because of the next point. We know that Eva slash Daisy is very high spirited. It is that presentation that she makes to Mr. Burling, whether it is appropriate or not, but she's demanding more. And she is representative of the classes rebelling against the upper classes. They want more for themselves. So it's a challenge to Mr. Burling. And it is that challenge that he resents. How dare this woman come and demand more from me kind of attitude. So that's really what she's let go for. It's not her work. It's her boldness and her high spiritedness and the fact that she's willing to go up to the big boss and say, look, we deserve more. Now, this in itself is kind of reflecting the historical context of the time. Keep in mind, this is around 1912 that the story is taking place in. And the suffragette movement is going at the time in Britain. Women were demanding more in terms of wages, more equal treatment, better treatment, better respect, but namely the vote. Now, they were met with a lot of hostility. They were met by, um, if you've studied the suffragette movement at all, they were thrown in jail. They were force fed. Um, they were often beaten and attacked by police. They, you know, they were not treated well. It got to the point where finally <laughs> uh, something had to be done. Well, actually it was the first world war, but they, throw, they posed a threat to that patriarchal society. They were finally standing up and they were willing to take this treatment to advance the cause of women. So Eva is in a way symbolic of that, of the classes rebelling against the upper classes and the women finally standing up and saying, we deserve better treatment. And the vote. Okay. We also know that she's got quite a sense of humor. She likes to have a laugh. Unfortunately, it is having that laugh that costs her her next position. 
she's fired from Mr. Berlin's, but she gets a job in a shop, a very nice, um, I think I think a clothing shop. Um, who shops there but Sheila Burley? And one day, if you've read the play, you know that Eva is just having a laugh with a coworker. Sheila's in a mood and she just thinks that Eva is having a laugh at her, complains about her, and then Eva loses her job. So she loses, loses yet another job. Now, Eva is also having a relationship with Gerald, which is Sheila's fiance, but the two women are completely unaware of this connection. Um, Eva does not know that Gerald has a fiance, to let alone knows that it's Sheila. Sheila has no idea that Gerald is cheating on her. She only learns this later when they are interrogated by Inspector Gill. Now, this is also in a way symbolic of the upper classes stepping on the lower classes. Now, Eva is very working class, she's from a lower class than Sheila. Sheila's word is just taken. She's uh, very, she, she's, from, she's from the Burling family. Her reputation precedes her. She's got her own little bit of social standing, just like her mother and her father. So she goes in and complains about a worker. They're gonna take her word over Eva's and Eva's let go. Now, granted, Sheila probably did not realize the severity of her actions at the time, but still it's, uh, it, was, it is symbolic of how the upper classes were able to step on the lower classes and exploit them. And Priestley was against this. Okay. Now, Eva is really used to demonstrate exploitation of women. We just had an example of with Sheila. She is from a lower class. She is automatically looked down upon as less than a member of the upper, the middle and upper classes. Now, we also have to keep in mind that the play is set during the Industrial Revolution. Uh, kind of the later end of the Industrial Revolution, but still, there was a mass migration of people leaving the countryside. People used to work in agriculture. Um, within 150 years, the vast majority of people had moved to the urban areas and were working in factories. So this led to exploitation of all classes of, of both men and women, but women were particularly vulnerable to this because they were paid less. They were often given the most menial tasks in factories. They were very rarely considered for promotion. Um, and they were often paid as little as 30% of a man's salary or wages for doing the same job. So factory owners would, yes, hire lots of women because they were a source of cheap labor. They could save a lot of money. So Mr. Burling, using a lot of women as a source of cheap labor made good business sense. Okay, but this is showing the exploitation of working class people and especially women. They're being taken advantage of. They had no actual right to work at the time. They were only taken on, um, like I said, as a, a source of cheap labor and, when, and they were usually the first that were let go if um, a man came along. Now her relationships also show the sexual exploitation that often could happen to women and the dependency that women had on men. She enters into both relationships of her own free will, that is true. Um, she enters into a relationship with Gerald, not knowing that he has a fiance. Now, <clears throat> Gerald, while she's with Gerald, she's fine. She's got a nice place to live. Uh, he takes care of her, she's got money. I don't believe she has to work. So she feels that she's quite set, she's quite settled and happy. Now, when he wants to end that relationship and return to Sheila, all of that security that she has is now gone. She loses her place to live. She's got to go out and look for work again. She's lost two jobs already. Her options are narrowing. Okay, so that is showing how women were dependent on men. Women had no right to work. Although oh, lots of women did work, but the work was often low paid, like I said, less than a man, very difficult to support yourself as a woman in this era. So they were often dependent on men. They had to get married because it was just very difficult. And it was also the role that was expected of them at the time. You're supposed to be a wife and a mother. You don't need to be working. Um, so this is symbolic of how women, if they were brave enough to leave their husbands, often were put into, forced into prostitution, forced into other things, other low paying menial work or to live with family, if their families would take them back. 
Now her life continues to decline and her relationship with Eric is in a way probably the most damaging one. Now he does try to help her. He does in some ways step up. He gets, he takes money from his father's factory to give to her, but her circumstances are a lot more extreme. She is now unwed. She is pregnant. Now the responsibility of that falls on the woman, not the man back then. Even though Mrs. Burling does make that comment that what about the father, um, women were often carrying so, social stigma, stigma of being unwed and uh, pregnant a lot more than the man did. Now she does, again, like we say, seek help from charities, but she's denied. She's uh, morally judged for her character and her behavior being that she is in that situation. Um, Eric does give her some money. But when that runs out, that's it. He doesn't, he can't give her any more. He doesn't give her any more assistance. I mean, if he, he, we like to see that Eric assumes some degree of responsibility in the end, but he doesn't do it when it matters. He doesn't step up when it matters. He gives her 50 pounds or something. And when that's gone, that's her support gone. So Priestley is using Eva to demonstrate the disastrous consequences of exploitation. She's exploited, she's exploited because of her class because of her sex, because she is a woman and automatically paid less money, and then, of course, sexually and emotionally. All right, so moving on. Eva's outcome, and what does that imply? Now, if you've read the play, you know that sadly she dies. She commits suicide by drinking a disinfectant. Now, this in itself is symbolic. We use disinfectants today to clean, to kill germs. So. In a way, this is Sheila cleansing her body of evils, and she has to swallow this, meaning she has to swallow the corruption of society and accept there's no more hope. I have to end my life. So that is what the disinfectant is symbolic of. Now, it also, poisoning yourself in this way is not an easy thing to do. It's actually a very difficult thing to do, very painful, very violent, and it makes her a martyr in sort of a way for the cause of the masses of people like her. Now, it's also showing that even in death, this poor woman is still being violated. She cannot escape the corrupt society she lives in without suffering final pain. So poisoning herself, again, that is going to be a very painful way to go. She has to endure it to escape. So that is what her outcome implies. Finally, there is meaning in the names that Priestley has chosen for her, Eva Smith and Daisy Renton. Now, Eva, you probably noticed that is very, very close to Eve. Eve is in the Bible. She is blamed for the fall of man. She tempts Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. She's tempted by the serpent. She then tempts Adam to eat the forbidden fruit. He does, and it leads to the fall of man. Now, Priestley is kind of doing a little bit of a switcheroo and saying, no, it's not women that led to the fall of man. It is men that are now exploiting women because of this. Now, her last name is Smith. Smith is one of the most common surnames in English. So that in itself is showing that this is equal to the masses. There are lots of Smiths out there. There's lots of Eva Smiths out there suffering the same fate. Now, her other name, Daisy. Daisy is a flower. It's very pretty. It's very plain, but it's very pretty. But flowers are meant to be plucked and picked and put on display, which is often what happens to her. And there, once that happens, their life is sadly limited. Okay, so that is, again, what happens to her. She's taken, she's used, she's put on display in a way, and then she's let go. Once she's not useful anymore, when she's no longer a uh, once flowers start to die, we usually throw them away. Um, she's just thrown away. Now, Renton, very similar to rent. This is possibly linked to prostitution or just being used when you're needed and then you're no longer needed, you're let go. So Priestley has used her character to show that men are exploiting women and the working classes and that there are so many people like her out there and what this sort of society and these sort of old attitudes can bring. 
the death of this poor girl. The death is, you know, talking about the death of the working class. Okay, so Eva is quite a complex character. I hope this was helpful. Please do keep in mind the historical context as you are reading Inspector Calls because it is very important. Again, I hope you are enjoying these sessions. Please do subscribe. I will keep the lessons coming uh, on this and my other playlists such as Macbeth, uh, such as the Stuarts and Anne Frank. Thank you again for watching. Please do comment, please do subscribe, and I hope to see you in my next session.